And I also want to mention another Bruce that's out there. He lives in this community, and apparently he watches me on some either YouTube or Facebook, and then uh, uh, gets on Messenger and uh, gets on Facebook and says terrible, horrific, terrible things about me. I just want to say to Bruce, God loves you. <laughs> Anyways, had to block him uh, from my Facebook, but uh, he uh, had some really wild things to say about me and, uh, and about the church. And so I praise God that uh, for whatever reason, he likes to watch, likes to criticize, and uh, likes to send me obscene messages. Uh, but it doesn't fizz me one bit. So uh, praise be to God. So God, God loves you, Bruce. God loves you greatly. And he's got a plan for your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll turn uh, to uh, 1 John chapter 3, our scripture readings from there this morning. 1 John chapter 3. Reading the first, the, the first verse really is the is the kicker verse for the message this morning. I'm not, really, I'm not preaching exegetically this morning. I'm preaching topically about Father's, so, uh, Father's Day. So um, this is a, uh, a text of scripture that talks about the Heavenly Father. You there, Josiah? Thank God. Okay. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us. Reading from the that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him, dear friends. Now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify or sanctify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue in sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Let me reread the first verse. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. And thank you for the Father heart of God. Thank you, Father God, that the spirit of the living Christ is present with us to give us inspiration and to lead and guide us and direct us into all truth. And Father, we ask today that, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, you would truly reveal yourself to us. And let us know, Lord, your will for our lives today and for our society and for our church. And Lord, as, as those that are here who are fathers and uncles and grandfathers, Lord, we think of those of our sphere of influence and we pray, Lord, that you would help us to lead a godly example in a day that is very wicked. And Lord, along that line, we pray for the leadership of this nation, of this province, and of this community. And Lord, it seems as though they've given their hearts over to evil. But Lord, we pray for them as the scripture commands us that they would repent and that they would do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. And we call upon, Lord, all of those who hear our voices today, to live right and to serve God. 
Father, we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the righteous, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, I start with a poor dad joke. Why did the children give their dad a blanket, underwear, and a sweater on Father's Day? The answer, because they thought he was the coolest dad. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so all the paraphernalia that you can get in the dollar store, remember when you had to go down to the, in Perth, it was Girdwood's drugstore, and there at Girdwood's drugstore, before there were shoppers drug mart, before there was the dollar store, there was the drugstore you could get, and they would have a cup with the world's greatest dad. And that was like, wow. I mean, if you got that, you saved up your 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 uh, money from your 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 uh, bottle collecting, and your uh, you know, if you had a if you had a uh, paper route, you know, you had a bit of money, you could go in there, and they could have ties there. Now it's so common; it doesn't mean much as much, but. You know, you'd be able to buy that tie or buy that thing that said the world's greatest dad. Hats, now they've got everything. They've got everything. Paraphernalia, father of the year, best dad ever. You know, we've got all kinds of things. But, yeah, I know, some have footprints of their baby grandchild on their tie. Their little exhibit A. All right, right back there, one of our elders. But what about the best dad forever? Our Heavenly Father is the best father forever. And he deserves more. I'm not going to die. What do you get for a, the best dad forever? You know, in the scriptures in Isaiah, the prophecy about the Messiah, one of the titles of Messiah is everlasting father. And uh, some would confuse that and say, well, uh, I guess that denies the Trinity. No, it doesn't, because Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He bears the marks of the Father as well upon him. And, and so there is a forever Father available to us. In fact, it's probably best to say that text of Scripture really means Father of eternity, not just eternal Father. I wrote, I'll read this from one commentary. In the context, this verse is proclaiming the redemption of Israel and the activities, titles, and blessings of the Messianic ruler, who will reign upon the earth and usher in a reign of blessings and peace that will have no end. And one of these titles is everlasting Father. The Hebrew phrase translated everlasting Father should really be translated literally Father of eternity. I was at the, the uh, thrift store, the ladder, which I'm on the board for the food bank, and so we run the thrift store, and, and when they get a religious book, they think, well, we should give it, we should hold it for the, the minister on the board. So, anyway, very old commentary from Isaiah. And it was interesting, because I'm quoting Isaiah this morning, Isaiah 9, so I looked at it, and, and, and it again, it was from 1909, and it said, God is father of the future. But it is much more than that. We suggest that the title means that this coming Messiah is also the creator of everything. He is the father of time and eternity. The architect of the ages. We know this is true. It quotes 1 John 1 and 3 and Colossians 1 and 16. Without him was nothing created that was created. In Hebrew, the construction of the letter of the phrase father is the primary noun, and everlasting or eternal is the term that describes the father. He is the father of forever. He is the father of eternity. 
which of course means that having any, he has no end because he has no beginning. It's hard to lose a father. You have them for a short time, some very short, and it doesn't seem fair. And we feel their loss and we feel the pain of losing them and their example, even if they were of not the pristine nature. As my father was not a, not a follower of the Lord and so uh, lived in a, in a lifestyle that was not in accordance with the scripture, but it still hurts and I still feel the pain of losing him. But we need fathers who transcend the time. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true till be till death, as the old hymn says. I've asked many kids these days about their grandfathers. And if they can even remember who their grandfather is or their great grandfather. Uh, I try to do this because I want them to honor them because they gave us life. They accomplished things that we build upon. Our fathers, you know, when I lived, grew up on a, on a farm and a place, you know, that had been in our family for 200 years. You know, when we came from the old country, from Ireland and Scotland, and, and settled here in the Ottawa Valley, or in the Ottawa Valley, you know, um, you have a lot of heritage when they're on the same farm <laughs> for all of those years. They're never far away because, you know, there's still stuff out in the tool shed or out in the, in the, in the barn that was from your great-great-grandfather. You know, it, it just the stuff never gets thrown out or it's just so close. But so often today, we're so scattered from our heritage. Our fathers last as long as they are as there is a generation that will raise up and honor their memory but we have a generation that tears down their statues renames their colleges and lives in a woke revisionist history of the faith of our fathers the fatherhood is is not what it used to be but yet God has designed us and built us as creatures that need the Father's heart and the Father's love. And there is thankfully a Father of eternity. He has no end and no beginning. And we can experience the Father's hand. The first way of experiencing the Father's hand is the Father's provision. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. You know, a good father is one that puts, in the old days, you know, we used to say, you know, put food on the table. Work, work, work to put food on the table and, and wood in the fire. To keep his family sheltered and warm and with food on the table. And I can certainly say that growing up, we never lost, we never were cold. Well, I shouldn't say we're always cold. That was my fault because, you know, when you turn a teenager, you want the privacy and I would close my door of my room and of course if you close the door of your room <laughs> there's no heat coming in because the wood stove downstairs you know goes up through the house and, and we would have a wash basin and, uh, and uh, that wash basin we get a little bit of, little bit of ice on top and when I got up in the morning that was my fault there was always wood in the fire there was always food on the table the sweat and toil of long hours of labor ensured that these things and that is a value that we should honor and respect. But God Almighty is the one who shares us ultimately. The scripture says that every good gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. He is a good, good Father, not just as the Son says, but as the scripture says that our Father, when a child asks for bread, when he asks for fish, he will not give them a stone. He will not give them a serpent or a, or a, a scorpion. But he desires to give us good things. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, the psalmist says, and I have never seen his seed begging for bread because my God is a good God and my everlasting Father takes care of me. I can tell you stories so many times we'd be here all day of the provision of my God. 
how the Father has met my needs and taken care of me. Taking care of my family so that I can take care of them. It all goes back to the Heavenly Father. Oh, I've seen his hand of provision. I've seen it so many times. God is a good Father. I've also seen the second day, I've seen his hand of protection. The scripture says in many places, and I don't have time to look to tell them all, but there's so many places where it talks about the hand of the Lord was upon him. The hand of the Lord was there. The hand of the Lord was there to protect me, to protect Israel, to protect his servants, to protect his prophets, to be there for them. There is no fear when the father is around. If you're with your dad, and my dad was a big man, uh, he started out in life as a as a bouncer <laughs> for uh, uh, for a guy named Perkins who owned most of Perth at one time. He owned Perkins uh, Garage and Perkins Transport and, and uh, Haggard Transport lines and all that kind of stuff. And my dad uh, was. Uh, a persuader against the unions. <laughs> and uh, anyways, um, that was uh, he was uh, he was also kind of a bodyguard for Mr. Perkins Senior Joe, old Joe used to call him. When I was around my father, I never worried if there was a dog barking or if there was some animal in the bush or whatever we were doing. I wasn't worried at all because my dad was. You know, when there was lightning crashing, all that was going on, and it didn't bother me because I knew my father, he would make it okay. If we were in the bush and we got off the trail and we were out and didn't know where we were exactly, well, I wasn't worried it would be lost because my father knew this whole countryside like the back of his head. I wasn't worried. We got up to a higher cliff or wherever, I wasn't worried because I knew my father would grab me, to take care of me. And it's the same today with my Heavenly Father. He protects me. You know, they give me a, uh, a box. It's called a PPE, I think. A Personal Protective something. Personal Protective Equipment. A PEE. P -E. yeah, you know, usually that's a mask. PPE. Usually that's a mask in the hospital or whatnot. But so I, when they said, do you have your PPE? I thought, do I have to wear masks, right? And they said, no, no, PPE here is a, is a, is a little box. You, you wear on it with a button that you, you hit. If, uh, you know, an inmate jumps you or you, know, you get caught or, or uh, you're in a counseling session and they, they, they come across the table at you. I said, well, that's great to hear. Uh, so they want you to wear this or in chapel if you've got a bunch of them. There's a bit of a riot or they want to take you hostage when you've got this. PPE, a button to hit. And uh, I carried it around the first couple of weeks and then I hitched the thing and that I, I haven't, uh, don't tell my wife, you know, she's like watching. <laughs> you know, I said, you know, uh, there's guards everywhere and there's cars and I, you know, but I just feel like it's hard for a counselor to sit there and counsel somebody with a device on them and just they see it and it looks like you don't trust them. And I get it and I get through security issues, but I, I've had such a sense of the Father's protection. And it doesn't mean we're careless. We, we can't just drive at any speed and, and do whatever we want, you know, and, and say, well, God will protect me. Yeah, well, those are famous last words. <laughs> but there's a sense of his protection that helps a Christian not worry like others worry. And when they talk about economic failure and they talk about this and that or whether it was our latest or last orchestrated pandemic, you can see those that are feared and those that are God's prophets. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O word with heavenly comfort. Isaiah 41 is a great verse, a great chapter, verse 10. It says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Another Father's protection. But then, with the same hand that he protects, maybe you, maybe you knew this was coming. 
and sometimes you've got to whack it. <laughs> you know, sometimes the hand is the hand of punishment, and uh, God has a big woodshed, hallelujah, and I've been there. <laughs> I've been in Daddy's woodshed before, and I needed it, and it was good for me. As the scripture says, the psalmist said, it was good for me that I had been afflicted, that I might know my God. How many of you, maybe you don't have to put your hands up, you've been to the woodshed too. And it's because the Father loves you. It's because his mercy doesn't want you to go astray. If the Lord cannot lead us by his hand, then sometimes he has to stretch out his hand and discipline. It says, the scripture says, in several places, whom the Lord loves. He disciplines. The hand of the Lord, if you're truly one of his children, then it is a delight to experience the chastisement of the Lord. If we can't pray brought to our knees by his word, then sometimes it is his discipline is the most merciful thing that he could do for us. Some say, well, that's not fair. Look at Moses. Eighty years he led the people of God, and yet God wouldn't allow him to go into the promised land because he sinned against the Lord. And we say, oh, Lord, that's not fair. King David served the Lord and was said that he was a man after God's own heart, and yet he was not able to build the temple in Jerusalem because he had blood in his hands and he had sinned. We say, man, that wasn't fair. You know, when we stand before Almighty God, all of our unfairness ideas will be diminished like in the mist of the morning. God knows what's best for us. He knows what is fair. We cannot understand what is fair and just, really, because we are clouded by the conditions of this world around us. But God knows what's fair. And lastly, not only is there the hero, the holding of his hand or the experiencing of his hand, but there's the hearing of the Father's voice. I want you, friends, just to think for a minute of your Father's voice. Can you still hear it? Uh, mine hardly ever spoke without profanity, so it's hard. <laughs> it's hard for me to listen to remember my Father's voice, but I can remember my grandfather's voice. I can remember that Lanark Highlands accent as though they just came out of Ulster. And I remember their voice. Do you remember your father's voice? You know, they say that um, there are certain things that begin to fade with time and one is to see their faces and another thing is to hear their voices, to remember their father's voice, that that is something that, that kind of dissipates with time. But when the Father speaks to his children, when the Heavenly Father speaks to his children, it's always with authority mingled with mercy. And I heard the Father speak into my spirit prophetically. I, when I was studying, I heard him say, the accent of the Father, the Heavenly Father, is the echo of eternity. And I wrote that down. The accent of the Father is the echo of eternity. My father, my natural father, had a uh, had a, what we used to be called, the eighth line accent. Believe it or not, almost every two concessions had a new accent from Perth up to California. <laughs> so you could almost tell where somebody was from, but whether they were the fourth, fifth line, eighth, ninth, eleventh line, whether they were Latter Village or they were Latter Highlands. As you go further into the bush, it became more Irish Scottish because. Uh, they, were, you know, they had kept. In fact, my great great grandfather still spoke Gaelic, and even though it was his great grandfather, grand, it was his grandfather, great grandfather that came. There are many accents. You remember your father's accent, but what the Spirit said to me was the accent of the Father, the heavenly Father, is the echo of eternity. What he says to us comes from eternity and will last for eternity. So when, when he says to us as his children, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
You need to hear the accent of eternity. When your natural father said, I'll always be with you, well, there's a condition because he would pass away and he wouldn't be with you. And you can say, well, he's with us in spirit or well, we sense him, blah, 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 whatever. He's not there. He's gone. But the heavenly father, when he speaks, he speaks with the accent of eternity. Whatever he says lasts forever. What we are told by human fathers is not eternal. Sometimes we would like it to be, but it isn't. On Friday, I had a request. You wondered when I was going to do a prison illustration. Um, well, here it is. On Friday, I had a request for grief counseling. And so I, I went to the cell block of this particular man and called him out and he came. And here was this bulky Italian a grandfather, Italian, you know, muscles, <laughs> and uh, tattoos and various expressions. And I took him into a room and began to counsel and says, here, I mean, you put down grief counseling. And he said, yeah, he says, my dad died. And I said, I'm sorry, sorry to hear that. I said, were you close to your father? He says, he was my best friend. He was my business partner. He was... He was everything. He was my mentor, my teacher. He was my discipline. He was everything to me. Everything. And the guy gets choked up. This big guy, an Italian, a part of a particular organization <laughs> that I cannot speak because I don't want to wear cement shoes uh, in the uh, St. Lawrence. But uh, great guy. And I said, when did your dad pass? He says, it's 14 years. And I'm going, 14 years? And he says, I, I, I can't, he says, I need to talk to somebody. He said, it fills up, the grief fills up. And he says, I can't let those guys, you know, in the cell block see me break down and cry. You know, I, I can't let them, you know, I, I'm, I'm an older guy, he's a grandpa. He, uh, he kind of mentors the younger guys. He kind of, they have respect. As he went from the cell block, we had to go down uh, or up a set of stairs, a two set of stairs, and every inmate that he passed, they seemed to know him. They seemed to have respect for him. He says, I don't know what to do. He says, I, can hurt, I can't hardly live without my father. And I simply tried to show him that there is a heavenly one. So all the things that, is that your dad, all the as, uh, honoring him was wonderful. That's you know, you, but you don't honor him by not being able to live right. You don't honor him, his memory by 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 living in misery because he's not with you. You have a heavenly father who is here with you. Your dad's gone. 14 years he's gone. And, that, and honor him. Wonderful. But you have the opportunity for a heavenly father. And I can't, I, I don't want to go into detail because I've I, I got to be careful of any particular case. But that's what I've shown him. The heavenly father. I want to introduce him and I want to introduce us all again to the Father of Eternity. The everlasting Father. <coughs> and I prayed with him and, and it's a good thing there was a roll of toilet paper in the corner of that room. I think maybe it's been used before for that. But anyways, I got a roll of toilet paper. I let him soak up a bunch of it. This great big burly guy who, um, if you met him in a dark corner <laughs> on a Saturday night, or doesn't matter what night of the week, you would be thinking twice. But here he is, broken and suffering, because he misses his dad. Truly, we are all children of him, even in prison. And oh, how we need the heavenly. Because he 
is everything that a father ever could be or should be and so much more. The Isaacs used to sing this song. I haven't heard it for a long time. I cannot make the world and hold it in my hands. I cannot make the lightning flash across the land. I cannot take a piece of clay and mold it into a man. But I have a father who can. Now he sits high and looks low and guides my feet wherever I go. When I don't understand, I have a father. I have a father who can. I cannot make a cloud and ascend into the sky. I cannot love humanity so much that I would die. I cannot even name the stars or count the many grains of sand, but praise be to God. I have a father. A father who can. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love. Thank you, Lord, that we have a Father from all eternity past and all eternity forward that speaks with the echo of eternity in his voice. We honor you, Heavenly Father. Lord, because of our relationship to you through the Lord Jesus Christ, because nobody comes to God except through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for our relationship. Thank you that you adopted us as, as your children. <clears throat> and that you are everything we need. I pray for anyone that may be here or watching and listening to the sound of my voice, even if they look at it or, or, or watch this program just to try to criticize. There is a Father for you. Maybe your earthly father let you down, or maybe he was the greatest guy since sliced bread, but you have a Father available to you if you would call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sins and come to God. You can experience all that his hand has for you. And to hear his voice is something awesome. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn. 54. 54. So, uh, Freedom's Night Faithfulness. Or we can sing another book. Let's stand and sing this. Thank you.
Now may the faithful Father God, the God of all eternity, bless and guide your faith this week. May you hold his hand. May you sense his